Hello everyone! Welcome to the Dependency Injection at Scale presentation. My name is Maciej. I have been developing FryOS platform for more than nine years. I started when Objective-C was still a thing. Currently, I work for Allegro. I'm part of the mobile core team. One of our tasks is to make other developers' lives easier by providing them processes and tools that facilitate development of new features for iOS and Android applications. Allegro is the most popular product search engine in Poland. It's one of top 10 most visited e-commerce sites worldwide. Every month, 20 million customers reach our platform and the traffic they generate also goes through mobile applications and it's a big chunk of it. The Allegro application for iOS consists of multiple modules. Developers experience long compilation times. So one of the challenges we needed to sort out was making builds faster. We tapped into Bazel, which is an alternative build system developed by Google. And after introduction, our compilation times greatly dropped. Every module has a corresponding Xcode project file, but we don't have them committed to the repository, to the Git repository. We use a tool called Xcode Gen, and we generate projects for modules based on a predefined YAML manifests that describes what contents should the Xcode project have. We also developed a command line tool called Steve, and it helps developers solving some common tasks related to Allegro workspace for iOS application. One of the jobs that Steve can do is generating a new module. So if someone wanted to develop a feature for the application, they just needed to type Steve generate and provide a module name and the module for that new feature will get generated based on a predefined template. What Steve does under the hood in order to get the job done, it calls module again, and this tool generates the module based on a predefined template that contains directory structure, some Swift files, configuration files, and manifests for Bazel and Xcode gen that help in generation of Xcode project and speeding the build process. The placeholder that is in the template is replaced by the name of the module provided by the user. Last year, I told at iOS ConfSG that Allegro application consisted of 78 modules. After one year, this number has grown to 117 modules, 91 of them being standard modules and the remaining 26 being utility modules. If you have ever worked on an application at scale, you might be familiar with the concept of the core object or the core module. Allegro application has the core module. And in old times, one of the responsibilities of the core module was to inject dependencies to every other module. So if somebody wanted to use the network client, the core module would 
import the networking module. It would grab an instance of network client and it would inject that dependency to every other module. And as you can imagine, networking is a feature that almost every other module needs to use. In order to know what networking client capabilities are, other modules need to import the networking module as well. But it isn't a good thing because by importing the networking module that contains implementations, they get access to internals of the module and they could break some functionalities of the application. So we needed to use a new approach. We created an interface for the networking module and we separated it in a module that contained only protocols and some publicly available types like structs, just everything that networking module uh, had to offer. In this new approach, other modules rely on this lightweight interface module and they just need to import the networking interface. And the networking module implements whatever there is defined on the interface. So this new approach has two terms that we use. There is a concept of a public module and a private module. In the case of networking, the networking module itself is the private module because it contains implementations of the networking interface module. And the networking interface module itself is the public module. So, we needed to add 91 more modules, public modules, to already existing private modules with implementation. So again, we used Steve. We created a new template, and again, the placeholder was replaced with the name of the module. And Steve generated for us structure for public modules, added them to the repository and it linked all the modules to the main application. So let me correct myself. After one year of development, the number of modules in our application has grown to 208. 91 private modules, 91 public modules and 26 utility modules. But we don't have all the modules in our workspace because Xcode would get blown up. In order to explain how we build the application, I need to talk briefly about the build process. Last year on iOS ConfSG, I talked in details about the build process of our application. You can watch a talk speeding up the build process of a monolithic application. Like for, I guess, every iOS application, the build process of our app starts with Xcode. Xcode under the hood calls Bazel. Bazel gets binaries of frameworks from cache or builds the modules with Xcode build. All the frameworks are then linked with Xcode into the final application product. We have this concept of focusing on modules. By default, there is no module focused on and our workspace contains only Allegro, 
application project, project for UI tests, and project that runs Bazel builds. If somebody wanted to work on the cart module, which provides shopping basket features to the application, they would need to type into the command line Steve focus cart. And Steve would add to the workspace the cart module and every other module that depends on cart. In this case, it's core module. Why is that? Why we add other modules as well? So we want to catch compilation problems as early as possible. By changing some interface on cart, we could break compilation and core module because it relies on the cart module. In the old approach, when somebody focused on networking, because networking is used by other modules, other modules will, would get added to the workspace. And it's a lot of them. In the new approach that we embedded, the networking module with implementation, just to repeat, has a separate module with the interface. And on this module, rely other modules. And if somebody focused just on the networking, other modules wouldn't get added because they don't rely on the networking module anymore, just on the networking interface module. So every private module with the implementation has a corresponding public module with interface. There is this rule of thumb. Now private modules can import only public modules. And in this new approach, implementations for the types available on the public interface get magically injected with our dependency injection mechanism. But before I will explain you what the dependency injection mechanism in Allegro application looks like, let's focus on the dependency injection itself for a moment. My old friend Indiana Jones will help me to do so. Indiana Jones, that you can see on that picture, represents the dependency injection mechanism. Dependency injection is based on the inversion of control principle, which assumes that a part of a program receives the flow of control from a generic framework. On the picture, there are two a bit abstract frameworks. The temple framework, in which Indiana Jones is, and the altar framework, in front of which Indiana Jones is standing. The altar framework has the stone platform object, on which the golden statue is standing. The golden statue can be described in the programming world in terms of a protocol. It has certain weight, shape, it's probably made of gold and has a face. Maybe after pressing some parts of the statue, a certain action should happen. Indiana Jones is holding an object from the temple framework, a golden sack filled with golden coins. As he is the dependency injection mechanism, he will deliver at program runtime the required object matching the golden statue protocol description, so that during the program execution, the stone platform from the altar framework will give the flow of control to the injected SAC object that comes from the temple framework and the platform will be being weighted down by the SAC. So let's talk about dependency injection mechanism in Allegro application. But let's start with the legacy dependency injection. So in order to 
inject network client to any module, let it be product page module. The core module, of course, needed to import the networking module itself. It would have to get the dependency container from the product page module and then assign networking client instance to a proper field in the container. And the old approach, as I said before, the networking client protocol was a part of the networking module, the private module. And the new approach, all the protocols publicly that should be publicly available were shifted from the private module to the public module named networking interface. In the networking module, there is implementation for the network client. And the dependency injection mechanism in the Allegro application is based on two phases. These two phases are part of the module configuring protocol. Every module, like networking, has a module configuration class that implements module configuring protocol. The first step in the dependency injection is register implementations and registry method. When this method gets called, the module is given a chance to register an instance of a certain type. The networking module implements the network client and in order to register this network client, it needs to call register type service method on a registry parameter of the method. And by doing that, it injects to the shared container network client instance that will be available as networking client protocol. The second part of dependency injection is actually dependency extraction. Every module can extract from the shared container whatever dependency they need. So product page, if it wanted to use the network client and uh, start with resolver method, which is part of the module configuring protocol, it can call resolver resolve type networking client.self and by doing so it will extract the dependency it needs. Our application module contains the list of all the modules that tap into this dependency injection mechanism. And you know, it's all of them. So there is an array of types that conform to module configuring protocol. So for product page, it's module configuration class and surprise, surprise, for networking, it's the same name. So this is why there is a prefix with the module name. At launch phase of the application, a shared container is created. The list of module gets iterated over and every module gets register implementations and container method called. And, and this method call modules register all the implementations of protocols defined in public in their public interfaces after this happens for each module the start with container method gets called and it's a separate loop because in the first run all the modules need to register their dependencies and afterwards, dependencies are available for extraction. We created a lightweight dependency injection module, and it contains just one class, dependency container, which conforms to registry and resolver protocols. 
So there is a function called register type service, which is generic over T, and it has two params, the type and an instance that implements that type. The method creates a key based on the given type, and under this key, it assigns a provided service in the dictionary of dependencies. Resolve type method, which is generic over T again, just extracts from the dependencies dictionary whatever there is under the key created from the given type, and it returns the value. So to sum up this approach, the new mechanism that we used it's based on a concept of private and public modules. Private modules contain implementations of objects, contain business logic and features of the application. Every private module has a corresponding public module that contains declarations of types and protocols that will be made available at runtime for other modules. There is this rule of thumb that, first of all, every module has its own interface module and private modules can import only public modules of other private modules. The dependency injection process happens in application did finish launching with options method. For each module, register implementations and container method gets called where they register their implementations. And then after the container is pre-filled with dependencies, every module can start with the container. Thanks to this approach, we're able to get lighter workspaces when somebody wanted to work on the implementation in a private module. We just needed light dependency injection framework. We also have this rule to have as little amount of third party code as possible in our repository. The intermodule dependencies were no longer so solid and we allow only depending on public modules from private modules. As said before, private modules inject implementations of interfaces and after this phase, any module can extract whatever it wants from the dependency container, which is shared among all modules. So this was dependency injection at scale. My name is Maciej Piotrowski. You can find me on Twitter under Mac Piotrowski 89 handle. I also run blog called Swifting.io. I work for Allegro and we have a company blog called Allegro Tech. And you can find some iOS related articles over there as well. Thank you for your attention and have a great experience at iOS Conf SG. Bye bye. We'll